Hello, this is Dr. Wright, and this is part of the Lung Pathology in Easy Bite series. In this section, I will address granulomatous inflammation in six Easy Bites. This part addresses the basic information that you'll need, and the following sections illustrate the various patterns. The learning point, firstly, is what is the definition of a granuloma? Secondly, what conditions are characterized by granulomata? and what possible pathological patterns are there which might help in the diagnosis. The definition of a granuloma is commonly stated as a collection of epithelioid histiocytes. In this definition, it's a little more uh, complex. So a granuloma is defined as a localized, chronic inflammatory reaction. The participating cells are macrophages and lymphocytes, and it's often characterized by multinucleated giant cells. You can use a variety of adjectives, necrotizing or non-necrotizing, caseating or non-caseating necrosis, and well versus poorly formed. All of these are perfectly appropriate adjectives to use in your descriptions. There are a variety of conditions in which granulomata can be found. Infections, mycobacterial and non-mycobacterial tuberculosis, and dimorphic fungi. Uh, in the following sections, I will specifically address these four types of dimorphic fungi, but there are others uh, which also form granulomata, cryptococcosis, histoplasmosis, blastomycosis, and coccidioidomycosis. There are some conditions of unknown etiology, and sarcoid exemplifies uh, this type of uh, reaction. You can find granulomata as a reaction to foreign materials, either inhaled or injected, such as in intravenous delcosis. There are a variety of immunological associations, as you can see here in this slide. Hypersensitivity pneumonia is uh, probably the most common of, of all of the conditions, but when one finds granulomata, you have to consider all of these, and that's why a history is very important. There are several possible patterns. Granulomata can follow the path of the lymphatics, and these lymphatics are present, as you know, in the bronchovascular bundles, the venous septa, and the pleura. If you find this pattern, consider sarcoid, but one must also always do a fungal and acid fast stains uh, prior to making a diagnosis of sarcoid. Airway association is another possible pattern. Unfortunately, these patterns are not mutually exclusive. But if you have a pattern that is airway granulomata predominant, consider these items, aspiration, inflammatory bowel disease, certainly infections, tuberculous or non-tuberculous, allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, and hypersensitivity pneumonia. Hypersensitivity pneumonia rarely is restricted to airways and often has a parenchymal component. Granulomata can be random throughout the parenchyma, and if you find this pattern, consider hypersensitivity pneumonia, consider infections, consider immunological uh, disorders, and certainly consider a lymphoma. If you find the granulomata, which are predominantly vessel-associated, consider a primary vasculitis, intravenous telcosis, malignancies, infections, and sarcoid. Thank you for listening to part one of the sections on granulomatous inflammation.